back. It is a Freaky Friday on Liquid Lunch, and you're watching Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV, the fastest-growing cable network in America, now available in 70 million homes. And if it's not in your home, you're watching this at work or somewhere else, call your cable operator and tell them, I want my Newsmax, because you got to be tuned in here every day for Liquid Lunch. Now, uh, a little earlier in the show, we talked about Tom Steyer. You know, the other day, Donald Trump said it best. He said the guy's a schmuck. Um, I don't even know why the president keeps talking to him, but I guess he wants to just completely extinguish him. Frankie talked a little earlier about how there's no Republican primary in South Carolina, so uh, the Republicans are running Operation Chaos and asking people not to vote for Biden, but to vote for Bernie to tighten things up because they don't want to read all these stories. And uh, I keep my attention focused on the one guy who I think is the biggest enemy of democracy in the whole race. And at least Bernie is a stated socialist. He's been honest about it, okay? What Mike Bloomberg keeps telling us is that he's the man for the job. He could beat Donald Trump. He is the closest thing we have here in America to an oligarch. That's what he is when he deploys and weaponizes his cash to try to take over our government. And for those of you thinking about Mike Bloomberg, don't forget when he was the mayor of New York, we had a referendum here where the people actually voted on one issue two separate times, two separate questions. Their politicians, their elected leaders should have two terms, period. And when Mike Bloomberg was mayor, he was so happy and joyous and egotistical being the mayor, um, that he actually bought off the whole political class and bought himself a third term, overturning the will of the people. So be, be scared with this guy. And after two, uh, if you ask me, lackluster debate performances, uh, he's still attacking Trump. And now he's talking about how, you know, his debate skills don't really matter. Take a look. I believe we need a leader I believe mean, we, we meet a leader who's ready to be commander in chief, not the college debater in chief. So if you want someone who talks turkey and who has a record of accomplishments on all the big issues facing our country, country, and if you want somebody who has the resources to beat Trump, that's me. Guy is a megalo maniac with a massive Napoleon complex, I can tell you that. He has a long history, long history, going back 20 years of uh, stop and frisk, which incarcerated more minorities than any other program instituted in New York City, he inherited New York City, and there was about 100,000 stops a year. Mike Bloomberg, at the height of his mayoralty, the, the most people stopped in a year was 600,000. So he didn't just stick with the program. He exacerbated the program. And in his own words, he said, when I was mayor, um, what do you think I did? I put all the cops in the minority neighborhoods because that's where all the crime is. And he further went on to say, 95% of murderers and murder victims uh, you can Xerox copy them. They're all the same. Minorities between 16 and 25. So, and then he goes on and talks about how, what caused the bank crisis in 2008, Mr. Mayor? What happened there? What was it? You know what he says? He says, well, I think it all started with redlining. Redlining was the policy of the big banks to not give mortgages in minority neighborhoods because they would default. And Bloomberg says, well, when they eliminated redlining and started giving mortgages in the minority neighborhood, that, that's what blew up the economy. So if you're not aggravated yet with this guy, I'm trying, okay, trying to get you aggravated because I want to see him off the stage and off his little box and all that other stuff. But uh, yesterday we talked about Bloomberg and how he's got this whole phony campaign speech about he's been training to be president since 9-11 when he stood on the smoldering pile. I had to remind him yesterday, he wasn't even the mayor on 9-11, by the way. He didn't come in until January, so another phony thing. But if his racism and his stop and frisk and his redlining and his horrible comments to women aren't enough to turn you off to him, he doesn't reserve his racist comments for just uh, minorities in the African-American Latino communities. He also, when he was a cop uh, mayor, he weaponized the cops against another group.
You're talking about right after 9-11, when everybody was petrified about another terrorist attack, we were super careful to always obey the law. Number one, it's the right thing to do, and number two, you knew people would be looking at it. We went, we sent some officers into some mosques to listen to the sermon that the imam gave. Um, the courts ruled it was exactly within the law, and that's the kind of thing we should be doing. Uh, I don't remember the rafting trip story whatsoever, but I do remember that. And we were very careful. And, and the, the, in the, the authorities that looked at us said, yes, you complied with the law. But we had every intention of going every place we could legally to get as much information to protect this country. We had just lost 3,000 people at 9-11. Of course we're supposed to do that. You put the cops in the minority neighborhoods. That's where all the crime is. And uh, when we have a terrorist attack by 21 people, mostly from Saudi Arabia, um, the mayor basically stereotyped the whole class and was putting NYPD cops in the mosques. He went on. He, he wasn't like, oh, I'm sorry I did that. I shouldn't have done that. He went on. Look at this. It was necessary to single out Muslim Americans that way. And would you do that as president? I, whether... Whether or not we looked elsewhere, there were lots of places we looked. We have an intelligence department in the police department, which is, I think, one of the finest in the world. I, I assume it still is. I've been away from it now for three or four years. But um, we put an enormous amount of work into and coordinating with federal intelligence agencies and state intelligence agencies to try to keep this country safe. And there's no question about where the people who uh, committed the terrible atrocities of the three airplane crashes and all the people getting killed, where they came from, and it's a natural place to go, yes. But remember, I was the one that defended building a mosque in New York City, which I got a lot of grief for. It's like uh, eerily reminiscent about what he was saying about minority crime. Uh, I put the cops in the minority neighborhoods. Well, that, that's where all the crime is, naturally. Um, and now, uh, you know, if, if you're a Muslim Democrat and you're thinking about voting for Mike Bloomberg, uh, he wanted to, you know, he was literally profiling Muslims in their mosques. And you would think, you know, unless you had some intelligence that this one particular mosque was radicalizing people, you would think the folks that are going to the mosque and they're praying to their Lord God or whoever they pray to, you would think. Those are the good guys. I don't know. Maybe they thought they were going to find a needle in the haystack. Um, but, you know, on the left, man, if, uh, if some people on the right profile or stereotype some minority, they go wild. But here's Mike Bloomberg basically saying when he was mayor, he put all the cops in the minority neighborhoods. And then when there was a terrorist attack, the worst on, human, on uh, U.S. soil, he put all the cops in the mosques. So I don't know. He's offended um, African-Americans, Latinos, Muslims, and uh, basically every woman on earth with some of his comments he said about women when he was running Bloomberg. One lady in particular um, had asked for a little extra time to come back from maternity leave, and he said, uh, what do your kid doesn't need you? You don't need, even need a nanny. The kid doesn't even know you. All it does is eat and poop. Just uh, find some black person who doesn't even speak English to watch the kid and get back to work. And uh, I don't know, if you're a woman, you're a Muslim, you're an African American, you're a minority, Latino, uh, I'm waiting for some comments to come out on Asians, um, because it's basically at this point the only minority class I haven't heard him individually attack yet, so we'll see what happens. And uh, I don't know, maybe he put all the cops in Chinatown when he was the mayor of New York City, and we'll find out about that. Who knows? Uh, all the rage today is uh, the Wuhan fears. Markets were down huge this morning, but uh, in a little bit of a recovery mode now, down 450, which is a nice bounce from the lows of the day, but still uh, way off where we were just seven days ago. So we'll keep you posted on all that, what's happening in the markets. Hopefully a close above uh, 26,000. That would make me feel a little better going into the weekend. Uh, Derek's out on the street. Nico's in a cab. Hillary Kramer is getting ready to come up very shortly, and Timmy Collins is going to close it up for this Freaky Friday. We're going to take a quick break and come back with more Liquid Lunch for you right after this.